Welcome back to the Vanessa G Fitcast. I'm Vanessa Gillette, and today is going to be part two of an episode with our guest, Alex Long. Alex is the head dietitian, head coach here at VGFN, and we're going to dive back in talking all about stress, the adrenals, and my experience going from burnt out to having energy again. So thanks for tuning back in, and here is the episode. But Alex, let's run through what are the symptoms that we, we want to cover here. Yeah, and thank you so much for interrupting me. Seriously, that is such a great point. And it is scary. It really is. And I think you can probably attest to this. If you knew then what you know now, you probably would have done things a lot differently. Because we all have been through those phases of our life where we have to grind a little bit. Right? We have to do a little bit more than we might want to, but there are ways to get that stuff done without burning ourselves out, without getting even close to this point. So again, now I'm just happy that we can kind of reflect on that and help other women who might be building a business or might be a full-time mom and not knowing how to navigate all of the stressors of life in a way that is sustainable for them. Like we can, we can help you with that, right? We can help you with that in in very small, sustainable ways. But anyway, great tangent. (laughs) Back to to the symptoms. So cortisol dominance, again, this chronically stressed state, one of the biggest ones, high blood pressure or high blood sugar, even despite exercising regularly or eating a quote unquote healthy diet, right? Remember, Cortisol is part of our stress response, but it's also responsible for blood sugar regulation. It increases our blood pressure so we can pump blood through our body faster, right? And run from that tiger faster. You guys might have listened to the earlier part of this podcast and and thought, wait, why is she talking about caffeine, right? Why does she have to limit caffeine for her adrenal health? But caffeine increases cortisol. Caffeine increases blood pressure. Right? And when we already have chronically elevated cortisol, it's just making the situation worse. And then if you are kind of in the other camp of, you know, HPA axis insufficiency or, you know, bottomed out cortisol, the caffeine is stimulating your adrenal glands to make more, make more, make more. But this system wide failure is kind of saying no. So I just wanted to clear that up in case anybody was wondering, but that's part of why. Um, another symptom of cortisol dominance is, is getting really tired, like your br- Your body is ready to go to sleep. You feel exhausted. You feel like you want to take a nap, but your brain is running a mile a minute. Like just you are trying to fall asleep desperately, but you just cannot stop thinking about all the things that you have to do. That was me in grad school, 100%. (laughs) Um, With that often comes like waking up between like 2 a.m., 4 a.m. and just not being able to go back to sleep at all, tossing and turning. Um, You might describe yourself as just, wired and tired like you could fall asleep at any time but you're just so wired and so like oh my gosh go 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 I have to do all the things kind of like what you were describing about a year earlier from this oh I could have gone to sleep Uh, at any moment (laughs) like (laughs) (laughs) seriously but your brain is just like kind of feel like you're on cocaine a little Mm -hmm. bit (laughs) oh yeah Yeah. literally my my body felt like I just needed to lay down but yet my brain was just like all the things like anxiety of just like thoughts running through my head constantly. And yeah. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Another big one too, especially for someone that might be overtraining, right? Maybe that's contributing to the stress. Um, Feeling like you're always getting injured. If you've struggled with like very consistent injuries over your lifetime, it's possible that one of the reasons is your cortisol is actually just way too high and your body is not prioritizing tissue repair. It's prioritizing we got to get her out of this stressful situation. Yeah. So that's a big one to look for. And for to. that one, I'll say too, because I don't know how much you and I, I, mean, I know we did talk about this, I think a little bit in the beginning, but you know, that was also during that time, um, I'd say probably like the, the four months up until when I started working with you, I was dealing with a lot of weird, strange injuries from the gym, which I had no reason to be dealing with because frankly, like I've been training a very long time. I'm very, very adamant about having really great form in my movements. I was videoing and watching things back. Um, I was sending stuff to our movement specialist as well to get a second opinion. I'm like, why am I having this chronic shoulder pain from these movements? I had to keep rocking back my volume. There was a point in time, I think up until when I started working with you, 
there were like two months there where I just was reducing my workouts more and more and more every single week. I was like, all right, I'm just going to drop back volume this week. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go from four days a week to three days a week. I was like, okay, I'm actually going to go from three days a week to two days a week. And I'm like, I'm going to take this week off. And then, you know, I'd go back into things and ease into it. And as soon as I would start back in, I would keep coming up with these weird, I felt like it was almost like an overuse injury. And I was like, I'm not overtraining right now. Why do I feel like I can't recover? And it, I didn't realize that that was a symptom of this until I started mm-hmm. talking with you. And that's when it all made sense for me because I could not figure out why I was having these issues and why I felt like I couldn't recover. And it made so much sense once we started talking about it. Yeah, it's so interesting too, like especially the way that you describe your journey, right? One of those red flags being that you are struggling with all these weird injuries. But then when you let that progress, one of the symptoms of, you know, essentially cortisol deficiency or, you know, AKA burnout, HPA axis insufficiency, whatever you want to call it, is your muscles feel really weak and you feel like no matter how much you try to lift, you cannot increase weight. You maybe have to decrease weight before reaching that, you know, muscular failure. Just think of like shoulder press, right? So if I can today shoulder press 40 pounds, no problem, 10 reps, then maybe a couple weeks later, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm failing with 40 pounds at five reps. What the heck is going on? Um, it's kind of a gradual change, right? Maybe during this time, I'd be dealing with those weird shoulder pains that don't really make sense, even though my form is really good. And now all of a sudden, my muscles feel weak all the time. I feel like I have to lift, you know, significantly lighter weights or just take so much time off from the gym. That's probably a sign that you've started to bottom out. Um, Another symptom, really common one that I see with cortisol deficiency is like you described this too, feeling so exhausted in the morning, even after getting like eight, nine, 10 hours of sleep, you would just do not want to wake up at all whatsoever. You're probably very dependent on caffeine to even just get you to be somewhat alert, right? Um, I see so many women struggling like with a very severe afternoon energy crash. And to be clear, a decline in your energy around 2 to 3 p.m. is actually very normal, right? Kind of like I described in the beginning, cortisol does gradually decline throughout the day. But it shouldn't be so severe that you feel like you have to take a nap every single day and you just cannot move, right? Like, Because think about it. If your cortisol is way, way up first thing in the morning and then maybe it shoots way, way down to like below optimal levels, you're going to feel that. Your body's going to feel that. And that's not normal. Like that's different than just kind of the regular aspect of our circadian rhythm. It's in the energy in the afternoon can usually be resolved by a snack and a nice walk outside. And then you kind of feel reset and ready to go. But that does not happen in someone with true like HPA axis insufficiency. Yeah. So Um, like if you feel like you can, you know, move around a little bit, like, you know, you need a little bit of a break from the computer in the middle of the afternoon. And then you're like, oh, I'm just going to move around a little bit, have a little snack. And then you get back to it and you feel like fine again. Maybe not as awake as you did at 7 a.m., but like you feel functional, then you're probably good. If you feel like you're like, oh my God, I really need another cup of coffee. I'm going to go to Starbucks and get a cold brew, even though it's, you know, 2.30, 3 p.m. And I know it's probably late for me to be having a cup of coffee. And, you know, you drink the coffee and you're like wired for another hour maybe. And then you just feel dead again. Like that's not, not a good sign. (laughs) Speaking from experience. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say you, you described that perfectly, Vanessa. And just overall, if you feel like you are consumed by your stress, no matter like what you do, how much you sleep, Um, It's so funny, right? This is why I like to call cortisol the Goldilocks hormone, because as I mentioned, in cortisol dominance, you're going to be, you know, waking up in the middle of the night or feeling like your your body's tired, but your brain's running a mile a minute. But with cortisol deficiency, you are also going to have difficulty falling and staying asleep. You're probably not going to be able to get adequate rest. Um, And it's just, it's such a fine line too, because a lot of times I'll you know, order Dutch tests for clients that have a lot of these symptoms and maybe even like a mix of both. And I'm like, okay, let's just get the lab work and actually see where your levels are at. And they, it's not black and white. Like you're not going to be, oh my gosh, overproducing cortisol at all hours of the day or, oh my gosh, I'm flatlined. I have no cortisol whatsoever. Like you're most likely going to be somewhere in the middle. And that's where like these personalized plans really do come into play here. And that's really like, 
it demonstrates the importance of actually getting tested, you know, and, and working with someone that knows how to read this kind of stuff. Because I see clients that are, like I said, overproducing cortisol in the morning and then crashing hard in the afternoon and then maybe spiking in the evening. And I'm like, well, no wonder you can't fall or stay asleep, right? It's they're just their normal curve is just all messed up. And let me emphasize what Alex just said there too about having someone that can actually read the labs properly because there's so much nuance to this stuff. And you guys, like your hormones in your body, your nervous system, your gut, your thyroid, your adrenals, everything works in tandem together. And like when one thing is off, it's probably influencing other things. And there's probably just a chain reaction of things. And when you take into account your actual physical qualitative symptoms with the numbers and not just the numbers of what the labs say. And like, sometimes it might flag something as being outside of the range, but also considering like, not just the reference ranges, but what is actually optimal for your body and having someone that who knows you, knows your symptoms, how you are feeling, how you're experiencing life, knows your lifestyle, what you're currently doing, and then actually can look at the numbers of things, compare different things and be able to point it all out draw it all together to you to be able to say, hey, this is high because of this. And this is probably influencing that. This is not necessarily flagged as high, but it's not optimal. It's probably because of this. This is that. This Like <laughs> explain it all to you in like the most beautiful puzzle. I cannot explain to you how like relieving it feels. And every single time Alex does one of these analyses for one of our clients and she does these, I mean, she does like multiple of these a week because I know so many of our clients have had issues like this and we're always doing these types of labs. And every single time I'm reviewing this stuff and I'm looking over it as well, I am incredibly impressed because it's, it's seriously, it is wizardry. So I really, really just want to emphasize it's not just about getting the labs, but getting the actual support from an expert who can explain it all to you and give you the action steps of what to do from there and help you actually implement these things into your life. Because it's not as easy as just saying, hey, here's a protocol, like here's a bunch of million things to do. Because we've had clients as well that work with, you know, functional medicine doctors and different things where they can give them great information. They can explain the labs. They can give them a protocol. But a lot of people don't really know what to actually do with that. It's not as easy as just saying, do all these things, take all these supplements, make all these lifestyle changes. It's really, really a lot of times like we're human beings. Our lives aren't that simple. It's like, well, what do you mean I need to, you know, stop eating these foods and eat more of these foods. Like I have a life where, you know, I have kids that I'm cooking for too. Like I like to, you know, have a social life on the weekends. I like to go to restaurants. Like how do I actually work this all in together? That's where having a coach who can actually help you with those things is an absolute game changer. So just want to really, I mean, like all hail Alex, because (laughs) I'm telling you having this stuff, it is incredibly helpful. Well, thank you so much for saying that, Vanessa, because it's so true. Like the body really does work in tandem together. And oftentimes I'm not just ordering a client a Dutch test, even though it's incredibly thorough. You know, we get information regarding your cortisol levels, your adrenal health. How is your body metabolizing cortisol? What are your sex hormones looking like? Because as we mentioned, you went off of birth control during that time too. And guess what? Cortisol imbalances can affect your estrogen and progesterone levels. Chronically high cortisol can prevent ovulation, right? And chronically high cortisol or even too low of cortisol can also impact your thyroid, right? So I'm often doing a combination of something like a Dutch test and an actual blood draw really to just get the whole picture. And that's what I love to do for clients. I love to put those puzzle pieces together and kind of show them, okay, these are your symptoms this is the data that we have. This is why you're feeling this way. You know, the numbers do reflect how you're feeling or sometimes maybe they don't. And then that's another puzzle that I get to solve, right? And kind of, you know, I never want to make someone feel that we are just treating their lab work because that's it's not realistic. And I know so many clients that come to us have that experience. Like, oh, you know, I got my labs back and they're normal, but I'm still feeling like crap and they're not addressing it. Or... I got my labs back and they're abnormal. So they put me on a bunch of medication or supplements, but I still feel like crap. (laughs) It's like, well, that's not really solving the root cause. It's not solving the problem because I want to use your lab work as data, but I want to treat you. I want to treat you as a person, 
knowing your lifestyle, knowing what you want to do and need to do on any given day. And I want to make it sustainable for you. And even someone like you, Vanessa, who, you know, we have had to make some serious changes. You did essentially cut out caffeine. You had to stop strength training for a little while, which I know is really, really hard for you. And you did have to work through kind of that identity shift of, oh my gosh, now I'm a business owner that's not coaching full time anymore. And I'm not training like, you know, this is not the the social media picture perfect coach that I've always wanted to be. So what does that mean? And that itself is so challenging. And it's, you know, something I'm really grateful that I, like I said, I do get to be a part of it because I know how hard it must be to deal with that alone. So I'm happy that you have me to, to talk about those things with, right? And yeah, it's just, it's one of those things where it's so individual that I never want someone to feel like they're navigating this alone. Mm. And I mean, I like to really drive that point home. I went from being not only a business owner, but a fitness business owner to being someone who was working less, not working out, like zero strength training. I have not been into the gym in months, um, zero, zero working out. Um, I am just doing yoga. I'm walking. Like I'm still doing health promoting activities, but I'm not doing ones that can really in any way add stress to my body because we had to actually essentially swing to the other end of the spectrum to kind of get things to start to normalize. So my protocols were a little bit more extreme and that's where it's like, I've been hesitant to talk too much about this because I don't want this to come across as like, this is the type of stuff we do with everybody who's having these types of issues. Honestly, I've been a very extreme case and I'm kind of thankful (laughs) that I have just for, to have that perspective so that I can be better equipped to actually help with our clients who have had similar issues and I can relate to them on that personal level. But I want to be very, very clear that the protocols that I've been on have been a little bit more extreme because I pushed myself to that place. And that's where I really, really hope that you guys who are listening, you're not going to push yourself to that place. You're going to learn from my story and you're going to do things right. Um, so, I mean, Alex, should we share a little bit about some of the protocols I have been on recently, or just maybe some different things that people in general, maybe who are not quite where I am, but maybe where I was at one point could maybe do for themselves? Yeah, absolutely. And, and just again, to drive your point home, it is possible to be really successful while doing less. Like you said, at this point in your business, it has never been better ever like ever you know what I mean you have so many amazing clients such a wonderful team we now have three coaches which was unheard of last year you know this time last year when all of these symptoms really started and again our goal is to prevent you from getting to this point right prevent you from ever have to going go on you know these extreme protocols that we're talking about and it can be done and you can slow down and prioritize yourself, prioritize your health, prioritize your sleep in a way that works for you, you know, while still getting done the things that you need to get done in order to, you know, grow a business or whatever else, you know. Anyway, in terms of, you know, things that you guys can take take away from this, you know, actionable steps that you can implement into your routine right now, especially if you're listening to this and thinking like, oh my gosh, like, this sounds like me. I had all of the symptoms of elevated cortisol or I had all of the symptoms of cortisol insufficiency. And now I don't really know what to do. Um, These recommendations are still going to pertain to you. And they're still going to pertain to someone that might not resonate 100% with any of these symptoms, but still feels like maybe their stress is impacting the quality of their life, right? Like these are going to benefit anybody. And one of the first things I would always recommend is like walking and taking breaks and Maybe things like yoga and meditation, while they are amazing, they might not resonate with you. I would encourage you to try it. There's a lot of different types of meditation. Sometimes I even consider journaling, like my meditative practice, because I turn on my Zen music. I give myself a break, specifically in the evening. If you are struggling with that, like, oh, you know, my brain is running 90 miles a minute and I can't sleep, I would highly recommend adding just even a 10 minute journaling practice you know, dim the lights, just kind of get into a nice Zen space and just let yourself write, let yourself brain dump like that itself can be very meditative. Um, Absolutely. Do not do any high intensity activity like 
super high intensity cardio, you know, things like Orange Theory, CrossFit, like they're really fun workout classes. Like I've taken them both. I know you've taken them, Vanessa. I know you used to be a CrossFitter, but when it comes to adrenal health, definitely not the best thing that you want to do. And, you know, ultimately the goal with some of these recommendations here too is like, we need to promote parasympathetic activity because even if you are in that phase of like burnout, cortisol's bottomed out, the root cause was because you were overly stressed. Your sympathetic nervous system was not getting, you were not giving it a chance to turn down, right? You were not activating your parasympathetic nervous system that rest and digest state, right? And even going back to what I said about digestion earlier, even just taking time to like breathe, I know it sounds silly, but like actually sit down before a meal without your phone, without your laptop and just breathe. Like if you have an Apple watch, use the breathe app to 60 seconds, deep breath. That alone can turn down your sympathetic nervous system, turn on your parasympathetic nervous system and actually help shuttle the blood back from your extremities to your gut to help with digestion and nutrient absorption. We need that blood right there next to our stomach, next to our intestines to efficiently absorb the nutrients from our food. It can significantly help with feelings of bloating or, or chronic constipation. And again, that's one minute, you know, two to three times a day. Super easy. And mindful eating in general, again, I think the practice of actually taking a lunch break and putting phones and computers away and not working while you're eating, actually pausing to just enjoy your food and taste your food and slow down can also be really, really helpful. Um, prioritize sleep 100% and really more so sleep hygiene because it might not be realistic for everybody listening to sleep, you know, 10, 11, 12 hours. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you were able to do that because you really did need to, but you don't need to anymore. That was a temporary period of your journey. Now you're sleeping, you know, eight to nine hours max and still feeling really, really good. And that's a pretty sustainable amount of sleep for somebody, even someone who's really busy. Yeah. Now so I wake up between 630 and 730. I still don't drink caffeine and I feel great. Most of course, there is I'm not to say that this has been like an upward journey where every single day is better than the last. It depends. Like there are days where I have lows. There are days where I have highs. But it is when I look over like the course of the week and the course of the month, things have been up and up and up into where I, for the most part, usually just, I still don't really set an alarm. I do have an alarm set for a certain time just to make sure I do actually not like oversleep because I do have things I do want to get to. But I typically wake up usually like an hour before my alarm naturally now. I don't feel dead anymore. I feel like ready to get up and get going. I don't need coffee and I'm good to go. And it's, I never would have thought that I would be that way. Trust me. I've been drinking caffeine since I was, I think I started in eighth grade was when I first started drinking coffee. Thank you, dad, for getting me on that. Um, and I <laughs> honestly, up until a couple months ago, I could list on like at least like maybe three times total, I think in the last decade that I went a day without caffeine. So that's bad. It's really bad. That's crazy. That is crazy. But a huge testament to, you know, the fact that what we're doing is actually working, right? The fact that you can sleep eight to nine hours a night, wake up naturally and actually feel awake and alert and energized and ready for the day. That's huge because you couldn't say that three, four months ago. And, you know, when I say sleep hygiene, right, you know, of course, if you can go to bed earlier to try and get those eight, nine hours of sleep, that's awesome. But we still have to think about, is it quality sleep? Right. Are we, you know, disconnecting from social media before bed, winding down, you know, probably for most people an hour before bed would be great. But can we start with 30 minutes? Can we put screens away? Can we maybe read a book with a red light lamp or a salt lamp, something that's not blue light? Because blue light can really impair your melatonin production. It can also increase cortisol production. Blue light blocking glasses are amazing, especially if you are just in a phase of your life where you do have to work later just by necessity and you're on a screen, buy some blue light blocking glasses and wear those after 5 p.m. They can help significantly. And ultimately, number one priority that I always, always, always start with our clients is eating enough. Eating enough. Any type of calorie deficit is going to be additional stress on the body. And when you're already dealing with the effects of either an overactive or underactive HPI axis response, we have to be at maintenance. 
like, again, especially if we do suspect some nutrient deficiency, if you're having any kind of like gut related symptoms, we have to eat enough. We cannot be dieting right now. Your body, when it's in this overly stressed state, and if you think about it, like HPA axis insufficiency or bottomed out cortisol is still stressful on the body. Like you are probably still dealing with some inflammation because now you're, something is wrong. Again, system wide failure. That's not good. That's still stressful. We want to get you out of that, right? So your body's actually going to be using a lot more B vitamins, magnesium, zinc than it normally would in, you know, a healthy person that isn't dealing with something like this. We definitely need to eat more period, right? More energy, calories, but we also have to eat more of those nutrients. Um, we need more anti-inflammatory foods, omega-3 fatty acids, nuts, seeds, avocados, salmon, um, and even vitamins A, C, E, they're all antioxidants that can really help lower the inflammation in the body and just support your body in what it needs right now, which is just rest and fuel to actually repair any damage that occurred you know in your tissues from this time in your life because like I said especially with something like this it's very possible that even if you thought you were eating enough you might have to give yourself permission to eat more than you think you need just to replenish those nutrients right and I know you had to go through something similar yeah I'm eating more food now than I honestly I've ever eaten in my life and considering the fact that I'm not even strength training right now I'm not even doing any type of working out I'm doing yoga I'm walking and I'm eating a ton of food and it honestly it's really great it's really fun but it was mentally pretty challenging as well and I don't think I would ever have been able to go down that path if I didn't have a coach working through some of those just mental challenges but also encouraging me um, supporting me like helping me see the progress that I was making, even when on days I didn't feel like I was making progress because it's not, it's not as easy as every single day feeling like you're making progress. It is something that you have to work through the tough days and you have to always be looking back from where you started and seeing where you are now and just celebrating those wins and using that to fuel you to keep moving forward. Absolutely, 100%. And I am seriously, I know I say it literally every week in your check-in, but I am so proud of you because you really have come a long, long way. And you are a very different person than when I first met you, Vanessa, in the absolute best way. I think you are running the business better than you ever have, which says a lot considering you've taken a huge step back. And again, I know that was really, really hard for you, but it has been so worth it, not just from a business perspective, but from a health perspective. And again, I think you are just an amazing example of someone that can be vulnerable and learn from their mistakes and use their mistakes to teach others and hopefully prevent them from going down the same path. But again, you are also an incredible leader that encourages us to prioritize our, our health, our physical and our mental health. Like, don't work past your working hours. Don't work on weekends if you don't have to. Take time off when you need it. Communicate how you're feeling. Give yourself rest, like whatever you need to not burn yourself out. That is what you are promoting to all of us and to everybody listening. And I think I think everyone can resonate with that a little bit. So you should give yourself a huge pat on the back. Well, thanks, Alex. And I absolutely wouldn't be here without you in so many aspects of that, just in how you've been able to coach me, how you've really stepped up in your role in the business um, and just what you're doing for everybody else too. So I really, really appreciate you. And for everybody listening to, you know, if from hearing Alex on this podcast and many of the others you've been, she's been on, if you've been like, man, I need this girl in my life. I want you to know too, that she is our head coach, our head dietitian. So she actually helps every single one of our clients, regardless of, you know, what their protocols look like, what their needs are. She's overseeing it all. And she's working even closer with the ones that need the lab work, need the additional help. So regardless, if you become a VGFN client, you do get access to Alex and she is going to help you and make you feel amazing. So we're, yes. we're so freaking lucky to have you, Alex. I thank myself every single day that, that we found you. Oh, that makes me so happy. And no, it has been so much fun, you know, especially now with Abby on the team, like being able to really help every single client that needs, you know, some higher level help and access to a dietitian labs, you know, or even just like a second set of eyes right? Because I mean, I'm still learning new things every day. I know Kat and Abby are as well. And it's so amazing to have them be able to like 
hey, let me quick ask you a question about this client. Like, am I doing the right thing? Do you, do you recommend anything else? Like, just know that you will have access to the absolute best quality of care possible because I know you know this, Vanessa, and some of you guys listening might know this too. And I've personally struggled with health professionals absolutely not listening to me. And it's the most almost degrading thing, if I'm being completely honest. It's just so disheartening. And I hate it for you guys because I know so many of you have struggled with that too. And they don't try to actually get to the root cause of what's really going on in your body. And that's just not fair. It shouldn't be that way. And that's why I'm so happy to be in this role and able to help every single client that comes through our doors. And, you know, ultimately, even if you're not a VGFN client, you know, who's listening right now, and you still feel like, you know, these symptoms really resonate with me, and I'm really struggling with some of these things, and I don't know what's going on, I don't know what to do. I really need someone to talk to about this, like, please reach out. Like, my DMs are always open. I love getting to know our listeners. I know you do too, Vanessa, but I am always, always more than happy to help. Yeah, Thank you so much, Alex, for joining us for this um, podcast. I think this is going to be really, really helpful for people out there. I know it would have been super helpful for me if I had been able to listen to this back a year ago. It would have saved me a lot of trouble. Um, so I really appreciate you giving us your time. And thank you listeners for hanging out with us. If you have any questions, shoot us a DM. If this was helpful for you, please leave a review. If you're listening on Apple iTunes, leave a review. If you're listening on pod, on the podcast app or if you're listening on Spotify. And if you're on YouTube, give us a like, hit subscribe, um, help us out with building out the YouTube channel as well. But that is all for this week. We will be back next week.